So now, Melissa, in terms of the uh, the training, is there, what do you feel like you're bringing already to the table? Other than, of course, you're being a trans transgender and already having that sort of point of view and the life experience of that. But what other st skills are you bringing into the Mars One project? Mate, I think it's my determination. Obviously, it's that um, never giving up, always looking for an answer to, to everything. Oh, I'm always happy, and I've got a good sense of humour, I can bring that in. And I'm a welder, and I'm an engineer as well, which a lot of people don't know. I know I don't look much like one, and I came out with it because it, it was one of those things, I didn't look right. I don't know if you've ever watched the film Flashdance, but that was how it looked like when I had my welding stick in, in my hand, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got, I've got a background that a lot of people don't know. And... I'll be, t I'll be taking a lot with me, and over time, everybody's going to find out what I'm made of, because to be honest with you, I, I think a lot of people don't see me as a potential candidate, and I really, really am, and just give me that chance. So now, uh, you see the uh, sense of humour right there, uh, is it going to be where you're going to be doing a little stand-up comedy for everybody out there, or is it just more about, like, oh, you're just easygoing, and you're able to make light of a situation? I'm very easy going and I can make like, yeah, like of every situation. No, I don't do stand up comedy. I try to get away for a show and I can't um, fail miserably. But still, I attempted it. You know, it's, it's one of those things I tried it. Yeah, well, I mean, part of, as Dr. Graff has said, part of the. the, the uh, being on Mars One Project, once you're on Mars there, you're going to have to find ways to entertain and be creative and engage yourself. So an open mic night might be fantastic to do right there with everybody else there. If, if I do that, they'll all be trying to get back on the first drop <laughs> because I can't see either. <laughs> so now, Dr. Craft, in terms of ways for them to engage themselves, is it pretty much just an open book? Are you just kind of like... Once they get to Mars, are you just tell them to find any other any way to engage yourselves, whether it be by building, exploration, just fun events that you could kind of come up with for yourselves? No, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what they have to do, you have to think they have a daily routine of checking the toxicology, uh, checking the surfaces, checking do they have enough water, enough oxygen, if the solar panels are working, our space also. They have medical checkups every day, so they are the most medical checked up people in their future life, basically. <laughs> So um, they have the basic routines for, for, for the safety of, of the whole team and, and the medical and physiological checkups and so on. So then they have the experiments. So we want them to experiments. However, they can decide what the order they, they take. So say this one um, first place, this is second place. We give just priority on some more important ones and they will be mature enough and work. However, if they switch things around because the environment uh, imposes it on them, then they are free to do that. So, and this is important, they have the freedom. So sometimes they say, okay, now we really need to relax, we don't want to do the science project, or, or now we still want to continue the science project and push our free time back. So this is in, in, in a point of freedom, so it's not a total freedom, because mm -hmm. they know we want to work with them, and they have to get the next habitat ready for the next crew to come. So they do have a timeline, otherwise the crew comes and have to squeeze with them in, and they don't want to have half the space they have now, that they want to have the same space that they had when they came, so they have to build the new ones, they have to have the food working, and everybody's waiting on the progress of them, so it's a little bit of pressure to, to see everything's working forward, and so they will work on that. I'm more worried that they do too much work than too less. So ah, okay. I really want to push them more a little bit, that they take freedom, more relaxation time, and don't push them too hard. So in a sense, will they have like a nine to five job, will it be, or then like two days off to kind of do what they want, or pretty much every day there's something they gotta be doing? They do have a daily routine. Uh, it will be not nine to five, but they have to have a daily routine which has to be done for their own survival. And, and the rest, they really can move around how they want. So now, Melissa, I've asked her all the other candidates here today, now if you're selected to be on the first team that goes out there, and are the first person to step foot on Mars. Have you already begun thinking about what your first words might be once you step foot on the red planet? It'd be something along the lines of, I did it. <laughs> Fan, oh, the, how many exclamation points go after that? <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, that sounds like great words to put up there. Thank you so much for talking to us, and I wish you the best of luck here during the whole process.
It's my pleasure, for, um, thank you for having me. Um, Dr. Kraft, it's a pleasure to meet you too. Pleasure to meet you too. All right, Dr. Kraft and I will be back to just wrap things up here in just a bit. You're watching the Internet's talk show, watchhollywood.tv.